Okay, I'm here in Tijuana, Mexico, outside of Evolve by Barita. Medi Spa. We got facial, all sorts of different things. So today I'm gonna go in and get some stuff done on my face here. I got my man Mario and Glenn over here. So we're gonna go in, check it out, see what's gonna go on. We're trying to get this whole procedure for you here today too and see what other things they offer so you can stay young. Hit pause on that instead of stop. stem cells on the face. What is that? Uh, anything on my face freaks me out, right? This is how I make my living, is my face. I need it to look young and stay young. There's only one proven way to reverse skin aging, and that's, uh, that's stem cells. Everything else can help. There are things that can stimulate a little bit of collagen growth. There's some extracts, you know, if you use really expensive, if you use really expensive creams, and some of them, most of them are from plants. Some of them are from humans. Then that can stimulate a little bit, but the only way to really turn back the clock is, uh, is with injections. Of of stem cells, exosomes, and growth factors. In fact, there's a, a lady who's one of our patients. So that's a before and after for two months. So what is the downtime look? Like how quickly a shot can you be um, seen and do things? Yeah, uh, about 24 hours is typical. You, it is possible to get redness for up to four days. So is it microneedling as well? The no, what, needling there's, there's, there are two ways of injecting it. One is uh, with, mic, with, a, with, a, with a needle, a microneedle, and the other is with a derma pen. The doctor will uh, look at you, evaluate it, say whether it's just derma pen or they'll do injections as well. Usually it's a combination. Yeah. Most, in, in the US, most people are familiar with stem cells from your own fat. Right. Uh, that's basically old technology. So we were doing that in Thailand 10 years ago and here 10 years ago as well. But about seven, eight years ago, we switched just to allergenic, which is donor cells from something else. Cells come from a healthy donor. They're taken, screened, oh, yeah. isolated, frozen, yeah. minus 60 degrees, yeah. where they keep yeah. for almost forever. So they're in the main up the road. And then when we need them, they're defrosted. It takes about one hour. So do... And it comes from fat. Yeah. Are they ever rejected by the person who's... No. And I want to educate people too on this, right? So they, sure. You know, yeah. Sure. It's a common thought that the rejection issue was solved 30 years ago in the laboratory. And so the cells are clean and they're also a new so There's no rejection. Occasionally you get like a slight immunogenic reaction, but in terms of actual rejection, it doesn't happen. No sort of negative response to the way. Depends where they're going. When they go in your face, then it's very rare, like one in a hundred, you see like a little bit of a reaction, but it's only a couple of days and some pretty much rejections. When we use a dermal pen, obviously your face is going to be over Right. Yeah, because the yeah, needles be. are just going to yeah. go in. And it's, it's, it's a special pen that pretty much starts heating you. So it will start uh, heating your, your, your face and to the pores. So we're going to be giving you a little bit of the uh, stem cells into your face. That way wow. it will be penetrating and heating. So we're gonna put it into your face and then use it there. Okay. And that basically stimulates opening into the whole area. And then the stem cells will start to start doing the whole process. You know, the collagen increase, the elasticity of the face. So therefore, little by little, your face starts to get better, more moist. It's been pretty popular for 10, 15 years. Kim Kardashian is the one that really made it. Well, she was just doing PRP. PRP, right? Yeah, PRP is like a, a weak cousin. We don't even bother with it. Really? So that's what it's uh, we do. Out, it, right? We mix it sometimes if we're doing hair restoration, but we do it occasionally, maybe one in ten, one in twenty, usually because the patient wants it. But PRP is like a poor cousin. PRP is blood, and the platelets are concentrated in the blood, and those platelets have healing factors which you put in the skin can heal, regenerate a little bit, but like a factor of six, eight, ten to one in relation to the actual cell production capacity and healing capacity of the stem cells and the exosomes. And the procedure yeah. takes how long? It's 20 minutes. 20 minutes. 20 minutes. Pain? Yeah. Mario said he was crying like a... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's not typical. <laughs> uh, it's, it's just uncomfortable. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, anytime you get needles shoved in your skin. Well, actually, it, it, it really is... So come get it's not that yeah. typical. It's not that. Maybe one in five people will say, well, I'm about that. So for the average person coming in looking to be rejuvenated and look younger, how much of a change do you see in people? For example, someone such as myself, right? I'm 59 you, you, years yeah. old. But your skin itself, the surface of the skin is in good condition, but you have sallowed out with age as normal. And uh, under the skin, there's a lot of damage. So you would see a very significant improvement.
movement. So it fills it, out, so you're just getting fuller from it. So you'll get slightly fuller. Basically, the aging is the skin gets looser, And so elastin and uh, collagen, they're the two parts that control skin tension. So you're literally growing new skin cells, new, new elastin cells, and new, new collagen. So you, you'd, see, you'd see a significant difference. Now, there's another aspect to it, which is artificially filling the volume of the face. So there are two ways to fill. You can either fill with commercial product. Panoramic acid is a major component, a rest of it. It's a major component of the artificial fillers, of the yeah. commercial fillers. So they literally make space. But another technique, which you've probably heard of, is fat transfer, where you take fat and you put it in the skin. The fat itself also has some regenerative capacity, but they're unisolated cells. So what we do, it's a typical technique, if someone wants more volume, is we'll take the fat, isolate it, take the stem cells and the exosomes, mix it into the fat, and then have the fat transfer which gives the volume, and that's done by a plastic surgeon to create the shape. There's a lot of skill to it. That's been going on for a long time, but when you mix the stem cells and the exosomes, then the fat itself takes more and retains more. So in a normal fat transfer, 60-70% gets absorbed, maybe 80%, whereas with, if you combine with stem cells and exosomes, then you're looking at only a 30% absorption. So whatever the surgeon does at the time they have to guess less as to where it's going to end up because what they're doing is physically more similar to the final result so that's quite common i would say a third of our stem cell facial patients have have a fat transfer so if the surgeon would have to look at it my guess is probably benefit they might look at you and say there's not enough you don't need enough in which case they'll just say use the artificial one the advantage of the stem cell one uh, excuse me the, the natural your own fat one uh, is that can last for years mm -hmm. two three four years with the uh, artificial it's about 18 months or so of the volume the skin repair factor uh, is easily three years sometimes four i mean i did mine six years ago i'm just sort of getting ready to, to do it yeah. Have you had it done as well? No, no. Yeah. Not ready yet. Not ready yet. yet. A little bit more. <laughs> so the other areas for the stem cells, which is Dr. Robinson's speciality, anti-aging, so that's IV. Yeah. So, uh, so they're, that's the, the my they're the two areas. You don't need to wait until there's pain that is that needs medication. Uh, so I mean, I did a lot of I did a lot of exercise. And my knees are now sore. They're like not painful, but it's just like I'm, I'm. I mean, I can I can run, I can jump up and down, but I mean, obviously in the business, so you know, financially I get a better price. But I'm going to do my knees, my shoulders, my ankles, just preventative. Anyone over the age of fifty who's ever done any sport should just should just get it done. Yeah. I mean, we tend to get people that are trying to repair a real injury, but ideally just with age. If you've got anything at all, then uh, it's worth doing. And those stem cells, they go directly into the joint, and that uh, Dr. Olson does that. Look, in 10 years time, it may be even less than every person that you know who is, let's say, middle class and has a little bit of disposable income will be getting IV stem cells for anti-aging and health every year. They'll be getting stem cells in all their joints three or four years, and then if they're interested in appearance, then, then face as well. It's becoming sort of main mainstream. We're on the early uh, on the early edge of it. So it's people are nervous, right? You see people online all the time, and they're coming out with these horror stories. Yeah, I went to another country and had this procedure done because they weren't allowed to do it in the US. So what you say to a person who's fearful of that, right? Like right. they don't want to come back. Sure. Well, I got a general answer and I got a specific answer. The general answer is Mexico is the first country in the world to legalize and control and regulate stem cells. There are still places here that don't use high quality stem cells. Produce high quality stem cells is expensive. It uses a lot of uh, it uses a lot of materials that, that cost a lot of it, that they cost money. The horror stories, let's say, are not really that horrific. They're mostly I wasted my money. Very, very hard to find someone who's been damaged by stem cells. You can find it if you really, really, really look, you know, but uh, I've been in the business 10 years and from all of the competitors, even those that aren't very good or, you know, let's say they're not, they're not long-term players, um, they don't damage their patients. Infection is rare. Maybe the main thing, but it's still it's still rare. Yeah, yeah. it's complete yeah. negligence. Uh, well, it depends where the cells come from. So when I said taking stem cells from yourself is old technology, um, that technology used because mostly because the FDA, US FDA, pushed the doctors and let's say the industry to force them to what they call minimally, minimally process the cells. So that means that the FDA insisted in the US that the cells are taken from the patient, don't leave the room a process in the same room giving back to the patient on the same day that's where the infection risk comes from if you look at our lab facilities we have a two million dollar lab but the cells are processed for one person in one go our infection rate is zero 
I mean zero, zero, zero. So when you hear about infections, it's almost all individual places. A few years ago, there were 500 to 600 doctors all around the US doing this solid stem cells, taking the fat, processing it. You can buy a kit for $5,000. 10 years ago, I used to run training courses to teach those doctors how to do it. We stopped doing it, but when you're doing it, when you take the fat and you process it and you take it and there's a person with a little hit, that's where, that's where the infection risk comes from. There's of course, any injection has a minor infection risk, but that's not really what happened. It's the cells get infected during the process. So the treatment, does it go, did it go down into the neck area as well? Yeah, we can, go, we can go a little bit down, not too far down. Um, so just to finish answering your question about the risks of going to a foreign country. So uh, Mexico, the legislation to legalize stem cells was introduced by my partner. So he went to the Senate, he mobilized uh, all of the medical community. They, they legalized that. There are 10 stem cell banks in uh, Mexico and my partner here, he's an equity partner in this business and he's also a lead plastic surgeon. He owns five of them. So when you have stem cells here, those cells are controlled by us from beginning all the way through to the end. They never leave out, they never leave our control. And there's very few places in the world where you can find that just because it's expensive, it, it, people in business go into different areas. And I'm not saying that if you don't do that, there's more of a risk. Uh, he owns five stem cell banks. He sells stem cells to people all over Mexico. So if you go somewhere to another doctor, you might get his stem cells. Uh, but cells that we have, we know exactly where they're coming from. We control them. You won't find that anywhere else in the world and you won't find that anywhere else in Mexico either. So when people come here, we have the highest, highest quality cells. The, the labs are all run to international standards. We have people from Korea, from India, amazingly, at the very high level of stem cell knowledge. We've had people from Thailand, which is a very high level. It's the latest technology. We have German equipment, Korean equipment, US equipment. What you get here is very high quality. Also, our prices are low. When I first started this, I paid $13,000 for one shoulder to do stem cells. We now do that for $1,800. That's our retail price. $1,800 for one shoulder, $2,800 for two. Face is a couple of thousand dollars for the whole process. So the price is really just, it's not free, but compared to what was being paid in Hollywood five, 10 years ago, 8,000, 12,000, 15,000, you're really getting a world-class treatment between myself and my partner. We've both separately been in the business for 10 years. So my, my company, Veritile, we bought a company called Global <coughs> Stem Cells in Thailand uh, in 2013. So we have 10 full years of experience independently and combined, uh, we have all of that experience. Dr. Robinson has seven years of experience with stem cells. So we're really, we know what we do. Yeah. So I guess the final question is, when stem cells first started coming into the conversation with people, they were harvesting, people were worried about, I guess, moral things. Like, where are these coming from? They're coming from aborted babies. Where are these stem cells coming from? So that, I think, is a conversation long since been put to rest, but I think people still might have questions. Sure, sure. The real concern is, uh, is embryonic stem cells. There's a line and the line is medically and uh, biologically they call it adult stem cell. An adult stem cell is the moment of birth. Okay, moment of birth, everything going forward is adult. So the stem cells that are available from the parties, from donors, are umbilical cord, which is the waste of byproduct, and cord blood. Wharton's jelly is also from the birth, which actually has less stem cells, has some other things in it. And then fat, skin, and dental pulp. All of those are adult. So even though it's one second into the life of, of the life of the baby, they call that they call that an adult because the, the baby is fully mature as a baby. The concern was with embryonic cells because the embryos were extracted before term, even even if it's two weeks, three weeks, and then you're in the realm of uh, that abortion is that alive because if you take the cells, then you destroy the embryo. So no one you'll be impossible to find anyone who uses an embryo. Sometimes they use it for research uh, and debate the ethics of that, but in terms of commercial delivery, there's, a, there's no need. There's also, the embryonic cells are fully undifferentiated and uh, you just don't need that level of flexibility. The cells that we give are called mesenchymal stem cells. They have the capacity to differentiate, but not into any possible cell. There are 200 different types of cells in the body, maybe, maybe, maybe more. The mesenchymal stem cells can really only differentiate into the main ones, but it's bone, cartilage, collagen, elastin, different different organ, muscle tissue, and so that's what you need, but it can't differentiate. For example, mesocarm stem cells don't become brain cells. They can stimulate changes in the glial cell structure in the nerves, but they don't become brain cells. So the embryonic debate, as you mentioned, is, is, is long over.
Net. Okay, so uh, um, it would be nice if, uh, I mean, if you have any specific concerns, you can have a private consultation with Dr. Robinson individually or, yeah. or together, depending on where you know each other. Yeah. Uh, stem cells are also are very, you have IV for any what we call sub health issues. If you're on any medication for any organ issues, then stem cells are very, very likely to help just through an IV administration. So that would be 50 to 75 million cells. IV takes one hour. The cells go around the body looking for areas to heal. If you don't have any of those issues and you're generally healthy, then you're just talking about reversing aging. Yeah. Everybody here in the business, everybody, Dr. Robinson, myself, and all the doctors, everyone over 40, we take the cells every year. It lasts how long? The treatment will last how long in IV treatment? How long does it take? No, it's just one what, hour. Like how often would you if you're gen if you're generally healthy, every year is good. What? Let's say you were pre-diabetic, and we'd probably be saying, depending, you need you need to consult the person. Need to consult with Dr. Robinson and look at all the factors. But typically, you'd be looking at two to three treatments over the course of two to four months, two to three rounds. If you had a chronic health issue, basically, the decider is is the patient on medication for organ issue. If they are, then you're probably looking at two to three rounds to begin with, and then maintenance every six months to a year. If you're generally healthy, every one to two years. So the IV then would be mainly blood-related issues and not anything systemic necessarily, like a joint or anything. That would be more um, of a direct. The only places where the, the stem cells won't go if you put IV is they're not going to go to the brain and they're not going to go to the joints. Otherwise, everywhere where the blood goes, they're going to go. Um, there's something called exosomes where it gets a little bit more complicated and the exosomes are very, very small. They cross the blood-brain barrier and we often add exosomes to the IV, an extra like three or four hundred dollars, we recommend it. And those exosomes can cross the blood-brain barrier. They help with mental acuity and generally, generally keep, keep the uh, in good shape. Okay. A lot of good information. It all depends also on the uh, condition of the patient. That way we can see how often the patient will need stem cells. If they have a really bad situation, how do they may need it sooner? Yeah, they like use yes, them up faster. Yes. The thing is this, once we put the IV uh, stem cells, the body is the one that decides where to go. A patient may have, a, let's say, a heart issue. So it's adaptogenic, basically. Yeah. I mean, even though we kind of stimulate it to go into start working on the, on the, on the heart, for the uh, example that I mentioned, but the body also knows that your lungs may have a problem or the kidneys or the pancreas. Part of those stem cells are fixing those areas and not all the cells are gonna fix the heart. Sometimes you will not see an effect right away with the first treatment. That's why you may need more treatments because the body is the one that is healing you. Okay, I have these stem cells. I'm gonna use it for that to repair these and to repair these other pieces. The cells respond to healing signals. Mm -hmm. yeah. They have honing capability. It's just like if you cut yourself, there are stem cells around, around. literally around your arm that tell all the other cells, go there and start healing. And then they come along, they may help, they may not. It's quite simple for a cut. So they probably won't actually differentiate themselves. But all of that entire process controlled by the stem cells cells to dispatch exosomes and inside the exosome growth factors and those three combinations is what determines healing but they respond to signals sent by the body of inflammation and what happens when you're sick and you don't get better is the body saying heal me heal me help help and the stem cells mobilize and they send everything and it's not enough and you have a chronic and longer term condition because the body has done all it can to heal